What is going on ladies and gentlemen, welcome back into Bradley Studios. Who's ready for another awesome project? I have my space cleared off here, at least a little bit, enough to get some work done. And we're gonna start off with an awesome uh, 10 inch by 10 inch round canvas. Now this is an, uh, a stretch canvas from Master's Touch. So of course I'd like to give a special shout out to Hobby Lobby for selling awesome clearance canvases. Uh, I like to stock up on these when I can and I look forward to selling more of these on my Etsy shop in the future. I have a ton of ideas for these little circular canvases and I've, I've really, really wanted to work with them for a long time and it's great to be able to get them for, for a relatively good, great price. It's really good to be able to use a really good quality canvas to even just practice with uh, and Hobby Lobby is the place to get these. Now, of course, uh, we're going to go ahead and unwrap this and get into this. Now, this is going to be a, a Christmas present for my father. Uh, so I'm super excited about this. Uh, he's not really into art, but I'm hoping that I can create something kind of special for him. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to cut this canvas in half, not in half with a knife, but in half with some clay. We're also going to make a topper to go on top of this canvas here. So we're just going to basically create some clay accents with Sculpey Original. What are we making, you may ask? Yes, yes, yes. We are making a fishing item. We're going to be making an antique or vintage, whichever word you like, uh, fishing bobber. Now we're going to stick to very bare minimum colors here uh, for the first few of these that I make. But in this video specifically, we're going to be working with Sculpey Original. We're going to be creating the little clay accents that we're going to add to the canvas here. Whether you add this to the canvas, bake it on the canvas, which I've heard some people were able to do that successfully. I'd rather not put my canvases into the oven if I can avoid it. So what we're going to do is we're going to sculpt these uh, off to the side here on some aluminum foil. And then I'll put them in the oven to bake and then we will adhesive them into place with some E6000. We're going to begin this process by just using some scrap clay here. You can kind of see that I had like a little bag of that left over from another project that I had torn apart. And I'm always willing to recycle them as long as it's not uh, like a really crummy or too dried out clay that I can't really work with it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create a, just an aluminum base. But before I can do that, I need to create just a clay base. So all we'll do is we'll put in some Sculpey Original into my lasagna press here. My son is off to the side. My three-year-old son is going to go ahead and work that lever there. And we're going to go ahead and smush this out. Anytime that I can engage my children in the creation process, all for the best. It's great to be able to get them uh, into the studio, even if it's just to help me out do something uh, uh, fun like this. Anytime that I can let them paint on their own, I definitely do so. Now what I'm using here, I do have the plastic still on the canvas and we're going to continue to leave that on the canvas until we get to the point where we're ready to attach this to the canvas permanently with the E6000. I'm going to use an X-Acto knife here. I'm just going to kind of layer in a thin layer of clay there, just enough to where when we put the aluminum foil kind of uh, filler in, that it doesn't push through onto the back of the canvas. I really just don't want aluminum foil making contact with the canvas. It's not a make it or break it type of thing, but if something were to happen and this clay piece were to fall off the canvas in the future that I would want the purchaser or my father in this case to be able to reattach that with some adhesive and it wouldn't um, it wouldn't be some raw aluminum foil that could technically break apart from the actual clay that I'm creating so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna kind of shape what we have now and then we'll start to introduce some of the aluminum foil layers so here is my reference here. Of course, we're going to make ours a little bit different than this when we get to the actual painting and the shading version of the series here. Uh, it's going to be an entire playlist on YouTube. Now, as you can see here, I'm just kind of re referencing where I would like for the topper to be. We're going to angle it at a slight angle so that way I can make the middle crease line kind of cut the, the, the canvas in half in like kind of a crescent moon shape. I just think it adds a lot, of, a lot of diversity to it instead of just making it completely straight across. You can do that. I'm not saying you can't. I just want to add a little bit of curvature to the, to the item so that it just makes it look like it's not so 2D. And it makes those little 3D pieces and elements that we're adding to the canvas just pop a little bit more. We're going to go ahead and fill this in with some more rolled out clay that my son is assisting me with. And once we do this, then we're going to slowly begin to shape it out. So sit back and enjoy as we go ahead and apply some layers here and then we'll slowly begin to kind of shape the clay into the overall kind of blocked in shape that we need before we start adding some details. All 
All right, so now that we can have that kind of blocked out now, now I'm gonna begin to actually remove the clay itself. And I'm gonna kind of use that recycled clay around the bottom to try to build that out a little bit. So that way it just looks like it's actually uniform and it's actually going along to the back side of the canvas as well. And it's just not just sitting on one side of the canvas. I wanna kind of try to make that front part a little bit of a, like an oval shape or a, a cylinder shape. And then I wanna kind of flatten out the very top of the bobber there so that I can have like kind of a rain texture. Uh, and this is where like the, the, the wire ping would be that would connect the wire or the, the, the fishing line to the actual bobber before it goes down to the sinker or the hook. Now, if anybody wants to purchase this from my Etsy shop and they do want a sinker, a piece of rope, or a hook that should be sculpted along with this, maybe even a worm, you just let me know. It would change the price point slightly, but it would definitely be workable. I would love to be able to produce more of an intense version of this uh, for you guys, whether it's for just for fun, for your content on YouTube, or whether it's for an actual person to be purchasing off my Etsy shop. So if you want a piece of commission work, just reach out to me. Of course, you can find me on Instagram, TikTok, uh, YouTube mainly, as well as um, uh, Etsy itself. So you can reach out to me on any of those platforms and I'll try to get back to you. Of course, Etsy is my main selling point. So really starting to take shape now. Now I'm just going to try to build this up as much as possible. Uh, if this does become a actual uh, really popular piece and I really have to build out a lot of these little clay features here. Um, if I do find one canvas size is more popular than the rest, I'll probably go ahead and create a mold and a cast of this, these items, so that way I can just quickly reproduce these and maybe a smooth on, a smooth cast like bright white or something like that. Uh, but for now, uh, hand sculpting them is very fun and I really do enjoy the process, so I'll continue to hand make these as long as I, I see uh, that it, it is beneficial for me to do so. Removing a little bit of the clay there around the edges, just trying to make that a little bit of a smooth transition. I don't want it to be too blocky. I want it to feel like that this is carved, not really carved, but just I want it to feel like it's a piece of the actual bobber there. And I want it to feel like it's at home. And I feel like that if I left that really jagged or kind of ripply, then it just wouldn't, it wouldn't feel like it meshed well with the rest of the canvas once everything is painted. I just trying to build that up there. I had a little bit too much aluminum foil there, so I did have to take some scissors there and cut a little bit of that away. That is no problem whatsoever. And now I'm just using the back blade of a of a, a bladed a sculpting tool just to kind of smooth that out a little bit. Uh, it's a little bit easier than just using my fingers for everything, but of course, most of the sculpting process is just with my fingers. You can kind of really see how that's kind of flattening out there, and I'm flattening that against the workbench there, uh, just so that we can get a flat segment on the back of that, that clay piece there. And I'll kind of curve the uh, edges in slightly, so that way it just looks like it continues around to the back side of the canvas. Just smoothing that out, making sure it looks really nice and detailed, and then we'll start to add those little rings in here shortly got a little stuck there but as long as it stays on there that we should be good to go now i do still have the plastic on the canvas so we're still working on top of that and it's easy to remove any of these pieces now at this point i'm really deciding where i'd like to place the, the kind of ring in the middle of the canvas i really do believe that i want it to be kind of off center just a little bit just so it adds a little bit of character a little bit of dimension to the canvas uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to continue the uh, the sculpting process and using sculpey original to create this ring so I'm going to go ahead and just add a few more details to the actual topper here. And we'll come back around to the topper in a little while when we add some more details. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and begin the process of kind of carving or taking away some clay so we can create those kind of like a wood teak texture. I decided to go with a wood texture just because I think that the overall vintage and antique painting uh, process that I want to go through in the next few videos just meets the needs a little bit better. I'm not saying that the plastic isn't cool or it doesn't hold the grunge that I'd like. I just think that the wood kind of texture across the top and having it like dark wood shading um, and then the possibility of me making different versions in the future and having different wood textures and uh, maybe even uh, different wood um, uh, chipping paints and things like that. I could do different layers like the, the, the lures or the bobber have been painted multiple times over different processes and generations. And a lot of the canvases are 
a lot of the lures and bobbers back in the day used to be a lot of wood uh, it used to be hand carved and then they would apply them to their rods or their tackle boxes and of course once we uh, started coming out with a lot more plastics and uh, of course plastics quickly replaced all of the wood versions of, of these bobbers and little fishing lures but i think that it's really cool to be able to use some of those older style textures and, and wood grains and uh, you have to kind of make sure that the texture kind of goes with the grain of the wood and so forth. Uh, I, I like the idea of, of, of somebody maybe carving a, a lure like this. Um, I don't know if anybody really does that anymore. I'm sure there are. Um, I'm sure they're a little bit more costly than you would pay for some plastic lures or some bobbers. Uh, but I think the, the, the artistry and the work that goes into them is just so much beyond what you can get in stores. And I would like to try to capture some of that in, in my uh, you know, sculpting and canvas work here in these pieces of art. I hope I explained that pretty well. I just want to be able to introduce a little bit more grunge than I would be able to if, if I uh, put more plastic textures into it. You can see my son is playing with a uh, little semi truck there. It made a short appearance there. And my son is just saying, what is this? What are you doing, dad? What are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> and of course he's slowing down my process just a little bit, but thanks to time-lapse here, we are just zooming through this process. Uh, and then there is our overall wood texture. I did apply, apply quite a few chips to the very edges of that wood before it flattens it out on the top. Uh, and I just used an X-Acto knife to take out little chunks of that wood. Now what we're going to do, my son is working the lasagna press again. We're going to begin rolling out some nice thin lines of uh, Sculpey Original. Uh, I did this quite a few times, just trying to get the overall depth that I wanted and the, and the thickness. Uh, and I, instead of just doing one piece of clay, I decided to do two pieces of clay. And I rolled one out to be even thinner than the rest. And, uh, uh, th that way it can kind of have like a layer on top of layer. And I can just smooth that out very lightly against the canvas there. And it just kind of makes it look like that's kind of um, maybe carved into the existing wood shape. I really do like that kind of finished look that it gave. Whereas the, the plastic lure here has a really defined edge on that lip and uh, that is actually a, a red color. So uh, that's all one color there and it's one piece so that the top part would probably be glued or snapped into place on the bottom because it's two different colors of uh, plastic there. And then the top part is of course blue because it's a plastic. We're not gonna go with blue for this version. Uh, we are going to, of course, uh, oven bake this separately before we begin the application process of the clay to the canvas itself. Now, there's a lot of ways you can do that. You can bake it on the canvas, as I stated earlier, or you can kind of set it separate. But, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and put it in the oven here shortly, and we will bake that at 275 for roughly 15 to 20 minutes. Of course, the top, uh, the, the piece of the top has uh, a little bit more thickness to it. It takes longer to bake. So my band across the middle did get a little bit over baked, but that is completely fine. All right, so let's go ahead and begin the process of kind of peeling this up here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay just aluminum foil there and I, I laid that just barely over onto the aluminum foil and I slid that onto a pan to bake. I set the large uh, topper or the, the um, the bobber topper on a, a stainless steel cup to, to bake so they bake uh, separately but in the same baking process you can see that the band in the middle is a darker shade of uh, of clay because it did over bake slightly it is not going to deteriorate the the uh, quality of that item in any way if i continue to bake it it would become eventually brittle but it did not reach that point here you can kind of see the overall kind of look that we're going for during this process here and uh, if, if you make the the band a little bit longer larger uh, and decide to trim it later after the baking process you can really decide how you want to layer in that line uh, as you get to that process but I'm going to go ahead and center it so that the edges of that clay kind of line up with the outside portions of the canvas so yes that clay band does not continue around to the outside edges but you'll see later in the process when I finish out the edges of the canvas in the painting process video later on this month it will be released um, or if you're watching this literally later on down the road from the series release, then you'll be able to watch that immediately after this one. I will tag that video at the end of this one. Now we're going to go ahead and open up the plastic off of the canvas here. Ooh, so shiny, so shiny. No, we do not have any gesso on this yet, but we will here shortly. 
Now I've already got some E6000 applied to my, my clay band there, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna give it a light sanding on the canvas itself, just to knock down some of the tooth uh, texture on the canvas. I really do wanna try to knock down as much as I can, even before I apply any gesso to this. Then we'll go ahead and grab our band there, and we're going to go ahead and just put this into place. Try to apply as much pressure as I can, especially around the edges, um, at the ends, and the, around the middle. But also, you don't want to create so much pressure that you bend your canvas in an awkward way, and it would ripple or, or cause too much pressure in certain places, uh, and it would just distort the canvas in any way. So you just want to let, let the thing uh, uh, sit uh, on its own volition, but also don't let it kind of pull up off the canvas either. So you just got to babysit it for a few minutes and make sure it just uh, stays flat the way you want it to same thing for the topper there we're going to go ahead and apply a generous layer of uh of e6000 and we're going to go ahead and put it into position now, now if i recall i did apply quite a bit of pressure to this and i do remove a little bit of the excess glue i did leave some of it behind that's no problem at all um, and then we're going to go ahead and get ready to apply a gesso layer to this yes i'm going to gesso over my clay uh, that is not a problem whatsoever the the clay does take gesso quite well just as if it were a regular acrylic paint um, now, if you were doing a bunch of sanding and things like that on this, of course, uh, if you hit the, the sanding paper on the clay portions, it would probably come off a lot faster. So just be aware of that. Um, but overall, it's going to leave a really nice texture. It makes it almost to where you can't tell uh, that the clay is a different texture as opposed to the actual canvas itself. I'm applying quite a bit of gesso here. Now, this is uh, just the... the whether or not the user wants to apply this much during their creation process of anything like this i am intentionally going to apply quite a few kind of um, paintbrush ribbed marks in the gesso and i'm going to make sure that those paint strokes are specifically in the direction that i believe that the circular shape should be so later on in the process, after this dries, you'll truly be able to see all of that excess kind of pooling up. And when I do start to paint this in later processes, then you'll really be able to see that texture come through. And it just accents everything. It makes, uh, uh, because it all is going in the, same, the right direction of the overall circular item, it really brings a lot of detail and a lot of, uh, of curvature to the item and makes it feel less 2D than it is. I think the gesso just added a little bit of extra extra detail to that existing paint that we're going to put on here in a little while. We're going to hit that with a heat gun there just to accelerate the overall top dry time. Uh, and then we're going to let that cure overnight before we begin any of the painting processes in the next video or two. I am going to produce this in a real time and a sped up version. So just be aware of that. You can check out whichever one you would like to in the future. They will both be available to you. Um, unless I eventually make the real-time version a membership only option maybe later on down the road Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you were inspired. Hope you liked the, the use of Sculpey original as well as the oven bake process and the gesso I will catch you guys on the next awesome painting video subscribe like and I'll see you later